Steve, you've done, I think, as good a job uh, as can be done in your profession of balancing work and life. You know, you've uh -huh. always been one of these guys, and I was talking to your former assistant, Bob Stoops, about this and how much he learned from you, that uh -huh. you can pour your heart and your soul into this job without being consumed by it. And I'm sure that you see a lot of your peers, whether it's this sport or basketball or high-level coaching, uh -huh. who never quite get that. Uh -huh. Do you understand why so many coaches lose their perspective, and how have you been able to maintain that perspective after everything you've been through? Well, I've just probably uh, never been a coach to believe that uh, if you outwork the other guy in the number of hours spent working on football, that that's going to help you beat the other guy. Uh, I, I really believe uh, the coach who has the best players who are ready to play and they have a good plan ready to go uh, certainly those coaches are going to be more successful I read some I don't even know who the coach was he said but the most important hours a coach has is when he's with his players all this other stuff you know and, and you can only teach your players so much and some coaches like to brag to the media how long they work and I've just never felt that was important uh, I think if your wins uh, will do the bragging for you. So whatever it takes to get your team prepared to play is what I've always believed is most important and not how many hours you're in the office. I want to touch on your playing career a little bit because when people talk about your playing career, they're usually talking about your college career. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in your NFL career because you spent, what, 10 years in the league, probably punted more than you threw, you got, you were a high draft pick, mm -hmm. you got cut a bunch mm -hmm. of times, um, but you did last for 10 years. Mm -hmm. When you look back on that playing experience, is sort of maybe a sense of disappointment the overriding emotion, uh -oh. or is it elation, or how, how have you processed that period of your life? Seth, I had the best job in pro football, backup quarterback. <laughs> you don't get hit, you don't get beat up, <laughs> you don't get concussions, and uh, I mean, you know, like you said, I'm 68, and, and I'm still in one pretty good piece. And a lot of my teammates now, they've been beat up, and uh, their legs, and they're, you know, gimping around. And That's a great some point. of them are, are not hurt. even here any longer. Especially from but, that uh, era. Yeah, yeah, backup quarterback is a great job, super job. And I had it for at least eight of the ten years I played. Uh, one year, uh, John Brody got hurt, and I played about eight, ten games uh, that year. And then I finished my career at Tampa Bay. Uh, Buccaneers first year and we managed to go 0 and 14 we had the record for the losingest team for a long time but the Detroit Lions broke it uh, God bless uh, five or seven years ago something like that and of course your other experience in the NFL from the coaching standpoint in your your two years mm -hmm. with with the Redskins and um, didn't go the way you wanted. You left $15 million on the table um, when, when you left that job. And, and you came out saying that that, maybe that experience, maybe more than any other, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that it taught you humility, which is not the number one attribute. Well, anytime, you, yeah, anytime you lose a bunch, uh, that happens. Uh, yeah, the two years there, uh, Dan Snyder, the owner, and he was also the general manager, and I was the head coach, and he and I didn't team up very well together. Uh, but we did, he and I won one more game than Mike Shanahan and Bruce Allen did their first two years. So sometimes it's all relative, you know. We won 12 and they actually won 11. But uh, of course now, I think the Redskins are really a good team. And I pull for them, I pull for them. But I also learned maybe this pro football is not best suited for me. And uh, maybe the college game is uh, maybe where, uh, you know, my talents or whatever is, are more suited. Was it, I mean, obviously the losing, but what exactly was humbling him about him? What did you, what did you well, learn? Well, the difference, here, here's the difference. The college head football coach, he's in charge of the team. He is in charge. And if he wants to call the plays, he calls the plays. Uh, in, in the NFL, you got an owner and general manager, and they watch practice every day. Our president and our athletic director, they never watch practice. Every now and then when they're bored, they come out and watch. So it's a little different. Uh, of course, the good teams, the winning teams, uh, New England, uh, Belichick, he's in charge. He's in charge of everything. So, uh, few and far but, between, uh, though. There's few and far between uh, the teams where the head coach is really in charge of everything.
It was never quite 100% clear what happened between you and Florida when you were coming back in. Somewhere mm -hmm. between them not asking and you not wanting. I guess the question that I would have mm -hmm. is, if their athletic director, Jeremy Foley, mm -hmm. had just called you up and said, look, Steve, mm -hmm. I got a truck full of money in the, in the driveway. Mm -hmm. We're not mm -hmm. talking to anybody else. We don't want anybody else. Please mm -hmm. come back to Florida. Yeah. What would well, you here, 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 I'll tell you exactly what happened. Uh, when it first happened, and I was sitting up there, and I don't know if I'd talked to South Carolina yet or not. I, I think I had. I think we'd, uh, Mike McGee, we'd had some conversations. And then their job opened up. So obviously, I, I, I get some thoughts about the old days in the swamp there. And, uh, and there was nothing, you know, there, no, no decision was going to be real quick. And then you start studying history of coaches who've coached very well to place and then come back and coach there again. I think John Robinson did it at Southern Cal. Mm. And the second time around, it just doesn't work as well as the first time around. History shows that. And they knew it. And then I started studying a little bit. I said, you know what? I know it now, too. And uh, even the president down there said, why would you try to repeat what you did here? When in six, seven, seven SECs in 12 years, why would you try to repeat that? And I said, you got a point. And I said, maybe I can go somewhere else and do it. And it does make sense. And you look at the history of coaches, 10 to 12 years, sometimes there's plenty at a place. Uh, very few last 15, 20 years. Bobby Stoops is doing it, uh, but very few uh, make it that long nowadays. And I just, I just sort of think there's something about, you know, changing jobs every 10, 12 years that is beneficial. My dad uh, was a Presbyterian minister. He liked to change churches about every three to five years. So uh, I, I knew something about moving around. You would have made a great football coach, I guess, right? Oh, he was an excellent coach. He, uh, he, he coached, coached mostly baseball, baseball, right? baseball and uh, occasionally in basketball, but mostly baseball. And don't yeah. let the minister think for you. He, was, he liked to win, right? He played to win. He coached to win. He told the backup kids, you might get in the game if we're way ahead. <laughs> but if it's close, the best players are going to play.